Hi, this is your host Sapna Bhartia and we are here at KubeCon and Cloud and Dickborn in London and we have with us once again Sayyam Pathak, Principal Developer Advocate at Loft Lab. Sayyam, it's great to have you back on the show. Yeah, thank you Sapnil. It's always a pleasure to be uh, at your show and uh, discuss community, cloud native technology, human aspect of things and uh, again, once again, happy to be here. It's, it's, it's always a pleasure to have you because you are a celebrity star in your own capacity. So it's really, I don't know which is shinier, the lights or you. <laughs> but going back to the community, because that's uh, when I like to look at the loft, I have seen their story from the very early, we have been working since the very early on. Mm -hmm. And the trajectory has been incredible, especially you folks do a lot of work in the open source space and also commercial side, which is critical. So I would focus more on the community side. So when you see the community here, how have you seen the community this year at this event? The KubeCon has been fantastic. Uh, I think it's one of the biggest KubeCon as it was mentioned in the keynotes uh, by Chris and uh, the the crowd at our booth. So we have a booth here. Uh, the crowd has been amazing. Uh, they have been talking to us about Kubernetes, multi-tenancy, um, GPUs, AI, all sorts of stuff. And if you talk about like uh, all the stuff during the keynotes, there has been amazing sessions at uh, KubeCon, which which has like more on the agentic AI observability side of things. Uh, I will talk about loft and community side, but uh, from announcements perspective, uh, what caught your attention at this KubeCon? If I talk about yesterday keynotes and if I see the sponsor showcase, I have seen the rise of agentic AI companies, especially in the cloud native and especially in the observability ecosystem. Because when you are observing your infrastructure, your application, and you have different agents that do different stuff. So let's say you have an agent uh, that, you know, just goes to a Prometheus, connects it, runs the prompt QL queries just as a human or a SRE does. And then it gets the results, pass on to the next agent. Next agent is connected to another tool. So like this, there is a chain. So there was a very good keynote uh, given by the CEO of Honeycomb on how to do observability of uh, the LLMs, uh, how it is different from APIs. And we have seen the pattern, like all most of the keynotes were, you know, getting the semantics out of LLMs, getting uh, the theory or the generic text out of LLMs when you are asking human readable uh, outputs from the issues that are being created or generated within your infrastructure, Kubernetes clusters, cloud native mm -hmm. clusters. And I think, again, very good use case was there from the one of the sessions where they use sign language and they have trained it uh, using Kubeflow and they are creating this whole application. So I think observability and uh, AI has been big at this KubeCon and including the keynotes, announcements and also uh, including the booths. Apart from that, yeah, they they, they launched, uh, it's CNCF is completing like 10 years, which is big for them. Uh, it, it's uh, 10 years for a big foundation. A uh, number of projects who have completed so many years mm -hmm. and they launched the Golden Cube Sonot program mm -hmm. where you get a certain number of certifications, I think 14 in the CNCF ecosystem, you become a Golden Cube Sonot. So those are the sidelines that they are kind of launching with. But overall mission is again to be the base infrastructure, whether it's AI workloads, because there was a talk around uh, dynamic resource allocation. How do you do that? How do you do the GPU slicing? How do you do the resource sharing of the GPUs? Mm -hmm. So whether it's AI, whether it's uh, regular workloads, Kubernetes as a central piece and how the cloud native ecosystem around it can support uh, the current and the growing needs for the next five years or 10 years. Now I want to talk about uh, Loft. Talk a bit about any announcement for the community side or in the last six months since the last KubeCon when we sat down. Uh, just, just give us a, where is community at Loft? So first is like we have a DevRel team at Loft who is focused mainly on the open source community, talking to people, uh, explaining the problem and then the solution and then where we cluster kind of fits in. Uh, what we have done is uh, we have grown the team. So we have, uh, you know, a couple of members uh, across spread across the world now, which is a very good thing because we have help now. And uh, we have launched a new product called vNode. Uh, which virtualizes the node level as well. So what we are seeing is in the multi-tenancy space. So let's take it as a spectrum. So we have this whole multi-tenancy space. We have, uh, you know, less isolation. We have medium isolation and then we have strong isolation. So as a company, if we talk about the vision, what we want to do is we want to solve the problems of the community in the whole multi-tenancy spectrum, starting from the low multi-tenancy, uh, low isolation to the max isolation which is why we launched vNode. 
So you can use the combination of virtual cluster and vNode so that you can virtualize the node, you can virtualize the Kubernetes cluster, and you can even get more isolation. For example, if you run a privileged container, and if you have a virtual node, and if you even break out of that container, mm -hmm. so you'll be only able to get to that virtual node. And if you do PS-EF, going a bit technical over here, but if you do PS-EF, you'll be able to see the process tree on the virtual node, not the exact node. So that's the kind of benefits that you get. And uh, we want the developer experience for the community to be same. So we are using, you know, the same uh, tools across the whole spectrum and we want to cover the entire spectrum. So good developer experience, covering the whole multi tenancy spectrum is something that we are working very hard on. Can you also talk about the, if you look at whether it's vNode, read cluster, you know, dev, uh, dev pod, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, before that, you folks have been doing a lot of open source uh, work in this space. Talk a bit about these layers. Are these like layers or are these pillars or series? Just, just give us S because you joined Loft. I mean, I would say recently because in Kubernetes, everything is long and short. Even though you have 10 years, oh, it's 10 years already. So you have also seen it from outside. Yes. And now you're seeing it from inside. So talk a bit about when you look at Loft, what kind of problem they are solving with building these different stacks? The issue is uh, if I talk five years or six years back, when there were no GKE, EKS, and all these managed services, yeah. the problems were different. The problems were Kubernetes adoption. Mm -hmm. Now these tools are there, even smaller providers have their managed Kubernetes services, like everyone is having managed Kubernetes services. The problems are different. The problems are too many clusters. Mm -hmm. So now people want to reduce the number of clusters. One of the solutions is, yeah, you reduce the size or you reduce the clusters anyways, or you go for namespace-based approach where it has its own limitations, or you need some solution for multi-tenancy. Mm -hmm. And if you see the multi-tenancy landscape, there are solutions that are being developed by other organizations as well in 2025. So we are seeing that this space is growing. The problem is rising. We talk to the enterprises. The entire multi-tenancy spectrum is rising. Another very perfectly fit use case for vCluster and where we see it being used is platform engineering. So platform engineering has always been hot, uh, internal developer platform, and I personally you know, kind of call it internal Kubernetes platform because we are in cloud native. In the end, everyone just needs Kubernetes clusters. So when we talk about the whole IKP thing, you have vCluster at the central piece and all the developers, they are requesting to the UI or the CLI that you build your platform and they talk to the vCluster API and the vCluster gives you the, creates the virtual cluster, spits back the kubeconfig file and you are able to kind of connect to that. So that is something uh, which is really helpful. So cost is another, definitely cost is one of the biggest use case. But yeah, uh, internal Kubernetes platform, multi-tenancy solution, cost savings are the key areas where we see this. And yeah, one very interesting use cases that we have seen is people moving away from VMware. So because VMware, you know, all the costs and stuff, which is everywhere in the news. So uh, we have uh, customers who have gone non-VMs, directly on bare metal, a cluster, and then virtual clusters using vCluster. And then we have GPU use cases. So we have, how do you use GPUs? For each GPU, how do you create multiple virtual clusters, uh, give them to your team, access the CPU only or GPU only and things like that. So I think these are the most common use cases that we see uh, that we are trying to solve. And then, like I mentioned before, if we talk about dev pod, again, solving the coding experience, like how you develop your applications, moving then to the layer where you want to virtualize infra, uh, virtualize the Kubernetes layer, and then moving a step ahead on vNode, where you even more, more security, more isolation, harder isolation. So you go for uh, the vNode. vNode is basically using the user namespace and the uh, SE comp both. And it has a new shim that gets added, runtime classes there, and everything is packaged for you so that it runs uh, there. So I think that's that's what we are kind of trying to solve. What is next in your pipeline when it comes to community? I think we want to rapidly uh, grow the community and we are, we are, we have some tactics how do we would kind of approach this because we are coming now as with strong statements. We, we recently published, uh, you know, one of the posts that why uh, one huge cluster is better than small clusters. So like this, we are trying to make some bold claims so that uh, we share our strong opinions in how stuff works. Also, since I have experience from outside, how things have been evolving and I have my own cloud native experience cloud provider experience. So I know how stuff works internally when you have a managed Kubernetes service. 
So with that, we will be keep keep on making those bold claims, and we let people know that this is what we think the industry is going. This is what we think that this particular solution is better for X Y Z. This particular solution is better for that particular need, and we would want community to interact with us, contradict with us, tell us. What are some of their other use cases so that we grow together? If something is missing, we would love to add new features because that's the whole point. We want to talk, and that's the whole point of open source. You talk to people about the problems, how this solves, and then hear from them what are the next problems that they're having, so that we can incorporate that within the same tooling and the same developer experience. So we talked about Loft, we talked about the community. Let's talk about Sayam quickly. What is in your pipeline? What are what are the things that keeps you excited about this community, this company, this ecosystem? Yeah, I mean, this community has given me a lot. Uh, I'm sitting with you. That's one thing. Uh, I have my community, Cube Simplify. That's one thing. Um, I I am recognized by people. That's one thing. So this community has given me a lot. Uh, what keeps me excited is uh, when. All the people here, they see new challenges like AI coming in. So people are not saying that you know we won't use AI or we won't do this, we won't do that. People stepped up. They said let's create new features within the ecosystem and let's empower the AI engineers, the machine learning engineers. If it's observability, let's incorporate AI into that and provide better solutions uh, to the users. So I think the excitement is there, the newness is there. Kubernetes 1.33 is coming up. And it's coming up with new features. So many people say, you know, it has become very stable. So it has become boring technology. Yeah, when things become, you know, de facto, like Linux becomes de facto, things become boring. But when you talk about Kubernetes and you see the release, there are alpha features with a brand new features. There will be beta features. There will be features graduating to uh, GA. So this shows that the excitement within the community and what they are building. So I think community has a lot to share. There's a lot to learn at KubeCon. And then there is this whole human aspect over here. And when you talk to people, you meet people, it's a welcoming community over here and you can share your experiences, you can learn from their experiences. Sayam, so, once again, thank you so much for joining me today and of course talk about love, the community, the whole CNC of landscape, your own journey. Once again, it was a pleasure talking to you and I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Swapnil, again, once again, uh, pleasure to be here. Show and thank you for having me.